Chapter 17, Part 2, Biological Indicators. <clears throat> Biological indicators, or BIs, are one of the most important sterilizer monitors available to the CS technician. BIs are usually ampules that contain a paper strip impregnated with a predetermined amount of live bacteria spores and a solution of growth media. See figure 17.9. The growth media provides a source of any remaining live bacteria to feed on after sterilization, thus allowing bacteria to grow and be detected. The type of bacteria varies with the method of sterilization, as the spore-producing bacteria most resistant to that sterilization method is used in the test. This test directly determines whether the conditions have been met to kill these resistant organisms. If the most recent organisms are killed, then less resistant organisms, organisms should also be killed. If the proper conditions are not met to kill the spores, then the test organism will grow when incubated after the sterilization cycle. At the completion of the sterilization cycle, the BI should be incubated according to the manufacturer's instructions for use. The load identifying information must be identified on the biological indicator in a manner consistent with the IFU. If the bacteria have been killed, there will, no there will be no color change or indication of life during incubation. This is known as a negative test result, no growth. If there, is a color, if there is a color change in the ampule or there is an indication of life through the incubator reading, it is known as a positive test, live bacteria, and items within the load should be recalled and reprocessed. A test ampule called a control should be run at least daily. When a BI is run and each time a new lot is opened, a control test is the same as the BI except it has not been put through the sterilization cycle. Therefore, the impregnated bacteria will grow when incubated, positive test results. This demonstrates that the ampules in the specific lot are still viable or alive. If the control ampule does not show bacterial growth when incubated negative test, that means the impregnated bacteria were, were likely dead for sterilization. Therefore, the BI test should run with the item being sterilized in inaccurate and will, be, will give a false negative reading. When running a biological indicator and control test, the results CS, the results CS technicians will look for are positive reading for the control or growth and a negative reading for the biological indicator, no growth. All test results and lot numbers must be carefully documented. A negative biological indicator result does not prove that all items in the load are sterile or that, or that were all exposed to adequate sterilization condition, conditions. Instead, it shows that all conditions were required for sterilization were met. CS technicians must follow proper preparation packaging and loading procedures to help ensure proper sterilization parameters will be attained. Biological indicator process challenge devices, or PCDs, addressed further in the next section of this chapter, should be used for routine sterilizer efficacy monitoring at least weekly, but preferably every day the sterilizer is used. Biological indicator process challenge devices, BIPCDs, must be used with every implant and they are, not, are, they are also required in each load sterilized with ethylene oxide, or E2O. Reasons for positive biological monitors. Positive Biological indicator results can be due to an operator error or sterilizer or utility malfunction. Whenever a positive BI results occur, it must be investigated to determine its cause. An operator error can be caused by the following. Using the wrong BI or PCD, using a BI validated for another mode of sterilization, incorrect placement of the BI in the sterilizer load, BI is placed in the wrong section of the sterilizer, under trays, or on their sides, may give an ac inaccurate result, not following the biological indicator manufacturer's IFUs, incorrect storage of the BI, 
BI stored in temperatures that are too cold or too warm can damage and lead to incorrect results. Storing BIs where there is inadequate humidity can also impact results. Incorrect cycle selection. Not loading the sterilizer cart to allow for air removal and sterilant penetration around through the load. Placing items too closely together or overloading or placing items on top of the BI can cause inaccurate test results. If the cause of the positive BI is not determined, the facility department or outside agency responsible for the sterilizer maintenance should be contacted to conduct further investigation. The sterilizer should not be used until the issue is corrected. Process challenge devices. A PCD is designed to challenge a sterilizer cycle. These packs may be commercially prepared or made at the healthcare facility. PCD packs may contain only a CI, but more frequently they contain a BI and a CI integrator. For those cycles where process challenge devices have been developed, the process challenge device should be used to challenge the sterilization cycle. See 1710 for an example. Protocols for using process challenge devices. The PCD should be labeled with sterilizer load information before being placed into the sterilizer. The PCD should be positioned in the chamber according to the sterilizer's manufacturer's written recommendations. The sterilization cycle should be run. Check the sterilizer and the PCD IFU for specific instructions. Implants. ANSI AMI ST79-2013 recommends that every load containing implantable devices should be monitored with a PCD that contains a biological indicator and a Class 5 integrating chemical indicator, or CI. An implantable, implantable device should not be released before the biological indicator results are known. As with all cycles, the sterilizer operator should review the sterilizer printout and the results of other indicators used to monitor the sterilization process. Impl <clears throat> Implants should be quarantined until the results of the biological testing are available. In the case of a documented emergency, an implant may be released from the results of the class five CI and physical monitors. However, the biological indicator must continue to be processed to obtain the and document a final result. If due to an emergency, the implantable items must be released before the biological indicator is read, the release and reason for the release must be documented. Sterilizer printouts. Sterilizer printouts should be reviewed and signed by the CS technician responsible for cycle monitoring, and if all sterilization parameters were met, the load may be released. It is important for the CS technician to know and understand the parameters that must be met by each type of sterilizer in order to properly monitor the cycle. Sterilization load control numbers. All items to be sterilized should be labeled with a load control lot number that identifies the following. Sterilizer identification number, sterilizer cycle number, date sterilized, example, 12 18 2015 which is december 18 2015 and some facilities use a julian date on their packages the julian date is the number of days that have elapsed since january 1st for example january 1st is day number 001 and december 31st is day 365. Load control information is usually applied to each package with a labeling applicator gun to place an identification sticker containing the load information. See figure 17.11 for an example. Definitions. Load control lot number. Label information on sterilization packages, trays, or containers that identifies the sterilizer, cycle run, and date of sterilization. Julianne date. The Julianne day or Julianne day number, JDN, is the number of days that have elapsed since January 1st. 
All packages sterilized by the CS department should contain load control or lot information. Load information helps to retrieve items during recalls and trace problems such as positive CI test results. The following information should be recorded on a load log sheet and maintained for each sterilization cycle. Load control number date and time, like cycle number of the sterilizer load. Specific items sterilized, including quantity, department, and item description. For example, minor, pan 1, OR, tile pack, 10, CS, or sternal saw 1, CVOR. Exposure time and temperature. Sterilizer operator identification. Results of biological testing, if applicable. Response of the chemical indicator placed in the biological test pack, if applicable. And results of the Bowie DIC testing, if performed. This documentation assures that the cycle parameters were monitored and met and helps personnel determine whether a recall is necessary. Note, a recall is initiated for a positive BI or non-responsive CI, wet packs, or other sterility problems. Knowing the contents of the load enables personnel to know where to go to reclaim the packages. This documentation can be compiled manually in a sterilization logbook, or there are computer software programs available to compile and maintain these records. Validation and verification. No discussion of sterilization monitoring can be complete without a mention of validation and verification process. There is a significant difference between validation and verification. Validation is done by the device manufacturer using a documented procedure to obtain, record, and interpret the testing results required to determine a process consistently produces a sterile product. Validation requires extensive laboratory testing and retesting of the process that will be recommended. And the results must be appropriate and reproducible. Testing must also show that the validated sterilization process will not jeopardize the integrity of the product. To validate the sterilization cycle, microbiological challenges are placed in the most difficult to sterilize locations of the device. If it is not possible to reach these areas of the device with a BI, then the device may be inoculated with the specified microbiological challenge via liquid suspension. The medical device is then subjected to three sterilization cycles at one half the exposure time. In all sterilization quali qualification runs, the device is packaged, if applicable, in a manner defined by the device manufacturer. The packaging should be appropriate for the device and available to healthcare personnel. The test results must show total microbial kill in the half cycles. Due to the complex requirements, validation cannot be performed in CS. By contrast, verification is performed by the healthcare facility to confirm the validation undertaken by the manufacturer is applicable to the specific equipment and settings in their facility. CS technicians perform verification by documenting the procedures to obtain, record, and interpret the healthcare facility's test results. The validation provided by the medical device manufacturer provides the framework for these studies. For more information on product verification, refer to ANSI AMI ST79-2013, Section 10.9. Definitions. Validation. Procedures used by equipment manufacturers to obtain, record, and interpret test results required to establish that a process consistently produces a sterile product. Verification. Procedures used by healthcare facilities to confirm that the validation undertaken by the equipment manufacturer is applicable to the specific setting. Important note. While product verification can be accomplished in a healthcare facility, the parameters validated by the manufacturer cannot be changed and properly verified. For example, if a manufacturer has validated a device to be steam sterilized in a 10 minute, 270 degree Fahrenheit cycle, a facility cannot test this item in a five minute, 
270 degree Fahrenheit cycle. Healthcare facilities do not have the proper products or equipment to properly test and ensure the item is sterile in the shorter cycle. Also, the FDA has approved the manufacturer's cycle, not the healthcare facility cycle. Sterilizer qualification verification testing. Qualification testing is performed to verify that the sterilizer is in good working condition in the location in which it is being used. This testing also ensures that the sterilizer performs to manufacturer specifications. Qualification testing is performed after sterilizer installation, relocation, malfunctions, major repairs, or any time there is a significant change to the utilities connected to the sterilizer. A major repair is considered outside the scope of normal repairs. The replacement of a door gasket is considered a normal repair. However, weld repairs, chamber door replacement, vacuum pump repairs, major piping assembly repairs, or rebuilds, or control upgrades are considered major repairs. For more information on sterilizer qualification testing, refer to the sterilizer operation manual in ANSI AMI ST79 2013 section 10.9. Sterilizer specific monitoring. In addition to previously discussed monitoring parameters, each sterilization method may have specific parameters that must be monitored to help ensure that it is performed correctly. Dynamic air removal sterilizers. Dynamic air removal test. This test is also known as a Bowie Dick test. It is a class two CI, also known as a specialty indicator. Class two indicators are designed for specific procedures such as a monitoring and effectiveness of the steam sterilizer to remove air from the chamber. C17.12 for an example. This test should be performed each day the sterilizer is used, at the same time of the day and after major repairs. The only items that should be in the chamber during this test are the sterilizer loading cartridge to hold the test and the test itself. The dynamic air removal test should be placed over the drain, chamber drain and run per the manufacturer's instructions for use, usually with a reduced sterilization time. Some sterilizers have a designated air removal test cycle. Check to ensure this cycle matches the air removal test manufacturer's instructions. When the cycle is complete, remove the test pack. If the chemically impregnated sheet has a complete uniform color change, the test is considered negative and the sterilizer is ready to use. If the color change is not uniform and there are blotchy areas of unchanged color, the test is considered positive and the sterilizer should be taken out of the service until the issue can be found or corrected. Note, dynamic air removal tests are not run in the gravity displacement sterilizers. This is because the air is removed from the chamber using gravity and not a dynamic method. Leak testing. Leak testing of dynamic air remover sterilizers is performed to ensure there are no air leaks within the chamber. This test checks the sterilizer's ability to hold a vacuum by testing all the sealed areas and piping to ensure air is not allowed into the chamber during a cycle's vacuum phase. Leak tests should be performed at least weekly in an empty sterilizer chamber. Leak testing is more sensitive than a dynamic air removal test. So it will detect problems before the air removal test might detect a leak. Note, refer to the manufacturer's operating manual to determine the accept acceptable leak test for the sterilizers at your facility. Biological indicators and in process challenge devices. The spore producing microorganism used in the steam sterilizer testing is Geobacillus sterothermophilus. This bacterium is used because it is a heat loving bacteria and is therefore resistant to temperatures used for steam sterilization. It is recommended that the commercially prepared process challenge devices be used. The materials utilized in the packages remain consistent because they are manufactured for single use. So there is no wear or erosion of the product. If commercially prepared packs cannot be used, 
refer to ANSI AMI ST 79 2012, section 10.7.2.1. Gravity sterilizers. Biological indicators and process challenge devices. The spore producing microorganism used in gravity steam sterilizer testing is Geobacillus sterothermophilus. It is recommended that commercially prepared BCDs be used. The materials utilized in the packages remain consistent because they are manufactured for single use. So there is no wear or erosion of the product. Again, if commercially prepared packs cannot be used, refer to ANSI AMI ST79, 2013, section 10.7.2.1. Ensure that the PCD be used is designed for gravity sterilizers. Immediate use steam sterilization, biological indicators, process challenge devices. The spore producing microorganism used in steam sterilizer testing is again geobacillus, Sterothermophilus. Bio biological indicators are processed in immediate use steam sterilizers or IAUSS without a process challenge device. This is because items are processed unwrapped or in special containers des designed for IUSS. Biological indicator ampules should be run in an IUSS according to the manufacturer's instructions for use. BI should be run at least weekly preferably each day the sterilizer is used, and with every load containing an implantable item. Immediate use steam sterilization monitoring includes detailed record keeping so patients can be monitored if necessary. When an IUSS cycle is run, the following information should be documented. Date and time of the sterilization cycle, sterilizer identification ID, Cycle temperature and sterilization time, for example, 270 degrees Fahrenheit at 10 minutes. Items or item being sterilized. Patient identification. Reasons for sterilizing the item using IUSS. CI results, which are chemical indicators. And BI results, if appropriate. For example, they are appropriate for implants, which are biological indicators, to be honest. Multiple cycle testing. Some dynamic air removal and immediate use steam sterilizers have the ability to operate in either a dynamic air removal mode or a gravity mode. If the sterilizer is used in both sterilization methods, then a BI and PCD testing must be done at least weekly, preferably daily, in both modes. Refer to ANSI AMI ST79 and to the sterilizer's manufacturer's instructions for use for specific details. Tabletop steam sterilizers, commonly known as autoclaves. Biological indicators and process challenge devices. The spore producing microorganism used in tabletop steam sterilizer testing is again Geobacillus sterothermophilus. Commercially prepared PCDs are currently not available for tabletop sterilizers. Types of items sterilized vary greatly from facility to facility, so creating a standard PCD would be extremely difficult to create. To create a PCD for the tabletop sterilizer takes the following. Select a tray of instruments or packages or a package that represents the most difficult item routinely sterilized in the tabletop sterilizer. Once the tray or pack has been identified, it should be used for test performed. Place at least one biological indicator and at least one chemical indicator in the most challenging area of the tray or pack to sterilize. After a major repair to a tabletop steam sterilizer, three consecutive test cycles with a process challenge device should be run and results should be read before the sterilizer is put back into use. Ethylene oxide sterilizers. Biological indicators and process challenge devices. Biological indicators are most acceptable means of providing quality assurance monitoring for ETO sterilization. Like biological indicators used in steam sterilization, an ETO BI has a carrier that has been inoculated with a known population of a microorganism that is highly resistant to the sterilant. 
the microorganism of choice for ETO is the Bacillus atrophius spore. It is assumed that killing all spores on a standardized BI indicates a successful sterilization cycle. This is because the biological indicator's population and resistance exceeds that of the bio burden on items being sterilized. Note, this assumption only applies to properly cleaned, prepared, packaged, and loaded supplies. It is recommended that a PCD be run in every ethylene oxide load. Note, it is essential that central service technicians are able to read and interpret physical monitoring information and chemical indicator color changes and know how to handle, use, and interpret the results of biological indicators. Remembering the four R's. Process monitoring consists of the four R's. Run, read, record, and retain. No single monitoring product provides all information necessary to ensure, ensure effective sterilization. Therefore, recommended practices state that available information from physical, chemical, and biological indicators should be used to assess the process before releasing a load. Hydrogen peroxide sterilizers. There are several different types of hydrogen peroxide, or H2O2. Several different types of sterilizers available in today's healthcare market. However, the basic monitoring requirements remain the same for all types of H2O2 sterilizers. Biological indicators and process challenge devices. Biological indicators are most accepted means of providing quality assurance for hydrogen peroxide sterilizers. The microorganism of choice for H2O2 is again Geobacillus sterothermophilus. The spore, because this bacteria spore, is the most difficult to kill using H2O2 methods. As noted earlier, the killing of all spores on a standardized BI indicates a successful sterilization cycle, assuming supplies have been properly cleaned, prepared, packaged, and loaded. A biological indicator process challenge device should be run at least each day the sterilizer is used, but preferably in every load. Commercially prepared PCDs are available, however, they are sold to monitor specific sterilization models. Ensure the correct PCD is being used for the sterilizer. Ozone sterilizer. Biological indicators process challenge devices. BIs are the most accepted means of, for providing quality assurance for ozone or O3 sterilizers. The microorganism of choice for O3 is the Geo bacillus sterothermophilus spore. Because this bacteria is the most difficult to kill using O3 sterilization, a BI PCD should be run at least daily each day the sterilizer is used, but preferably in each load. Personal monitoring. Personal monitoring can involve several different types of services and devices. One type of monitoring system uses a badge type monitor that affixes directly to the employee's clothing in the breathing zone, which is within one foot of the person's nose. Area monitors are also commonly used. These measure the quality of air in a specific area and alarm if air quality levels are breached. Staff education. Tasks performed by CS technicians require specific knowledge and skills. The safety of both staff and patients depends on proper execution of staff skills. New instruments, equipment, standards, and regulations make ongoing education necessary for even the most experienced CS technicians. CS departments must provide evidence of the training and education provided for staff. That evidence is usually contained in training documents, competencies, and continuing education records. Training documents. When a new employee enters the CS department or when an existing employee moves to a new position within the department, the formal process of orienting and training the staff member to their new responsibilities begins. The process, that process, should follow a carefully designed training plan that will prepare the employee to correctly perform the required duties. Training and or orientation documents must be kept on file for each employee as evidence that formal training occurred. Competencies. Employee competency records are an important monitoring tool for the CS department. 
competencies provide evidence that the employee understands specific tasks and is qualified to perform them. Competency records are important for the growth of the department and serve as a basis for quality improvement QI program. Detailed detailed step-by-step -step lists should be developed and utilized for each task performed within the CS department. Competency should be done during initial orientation, whenever a new device is received, and on a routine basis for daily CS tasks. Some competencies will need to be done annually, for example, tasks pertaining to sterilizer operation and documentation. While other job duties such as wrapping techniques may only be need to be done when issues arise on a routine basis. Competency records can be reviewed to determine areas where each employee excels or where more training is needed. That can also be used to show process improvement. Continuing education records. The CS discipline is cons the CS discipline is constantly changing and CS technicians must change with it. Continuing education provides a means of staying abreast of changes in regulations, standards, technology, scientific knowledge, and equipment. Continuing education records provide evidence that the employee has kept current and is aware of new best practices. Figure 1713 provides an example of an employee in service, a common method used to help educate CS staff. Education records should be kept on file for all CS employees and should be monitored to help ensure they are current. Conclusion. Properly and consistent, consistently monitoring the central service department and processing equipment helps ensure patient and staff safety. It also helps ensure that the consistent production of high quality products. Every member of the CS department must monitor the environment work practices, mechanical process, and training and education to ensure the standards, regulations, and best practices are properly and consistently followed. Terms to remember, monitor, load control number, Julian date, validation, and verification. End and conclusion of chapter 17.